cursed guns that can backfire on you. Since the introduction of gunpowder and weaponry, gunmakers have sought to make their firearms more and more effective. Some designs have become legendary, their creation inspiring the next generation of development. Some, however, were probably best left on the drawing board. These are just a few more of those weapons. The M50-M55 Reesing Submachine Gun During their island-hopping Pacific campaign of the Second World War, American Marines were in need of some extra firepower in the close confines of the jungle environment. The current issued Thompson submachine gun was becoming outdated, and the search was on for a new weapon to take its place. That replacement was the M50 Reesing, a weapon that left a lot to be desired. Invented in 1940 by its namesake Eugene Reesing, the M50 was originally intended for law enforcement, something compact for storage in a squad car. It's lightweight at 6.8 pounds and measured in at 36 inches. A later variant designated the M55 was even shorter, incorporating a folding wire stock. They were also cheap, costing $68 compared to $200 for a Thompson. It was chambered in 45 ACP and could shoot 550 rounds per minute from a 20-round box magazine. In spite of its success as a law enforcement tool, its use would be problematic in the dense jungles of the Pacific Theater. The first major issue with the weapon was poor ergonomics. The magazine was too small and the rounds would be expended after a few seconds of continuous firing. Additionally, reloading it was inefficient due to the awkward location of the charging handle, which was placed in front of the magazine. The other issues are much more serious. The guns were unreliable and would often jam in the salty and humid conditions of the South Pacific. In addition, many of the internal workings were hand-fitted, so maintenance was difficult if not downright impossible in a combat environment. The sights would often break as well, and Marines issued the weapon would just abandon it after a malfunction. As a result, the M50 and M55 became the weapon with the shortest service life in American military history, being withdrawn from frontline service in 1943. Hey everyone, it's Chris. You're probably used to hearing me during our advertisements, but now I want to talk about something a little bit different. Every video we create is more than just content. It's a blend of research, creativity, and passion for history. We do it because we believe in the power of history, its lessons, its stories, and its ability to connect everyone. Sometimes the reality of operating a YouTube channel presents challenges, like the occasional demonetization, which impacts the ability to produce the content that we all love. Now we're looking at you, our amazing audience, to ask for your support in keeping this channel, our shared passion for history, alive and thriving. We're inviting you to join us on Patreon and contribute to the ongoing creation and distribution of our history content. By joining us on Patreon, you're doing more than just supporting our content. You're becoming an integral part of a community dedicated to preserving and promoting history. Remember, every bit of support makes a real difference. If you'd like to learn more about how you can help, please follow the link down below. Thank you, as always, for your interest and your hunger for history. The USFA Zip 22 Firearms maker, the U.S. Firearms Manufacturing Company, was a successful gun manufacturer, producing replicas of historic Colt revolvers, making these legendary pieces affordable to enthusiasts. This all changed in 2013, when company owner Douglas Donnelly designed a new firearm to sell to the masses. In order to raise capital for the new product, the company's tooling machines were sold off. The results of his invention were somewhat underwhelming. The Zip 22 is a semi-automatic bullpup pistol chambered in 22 long rifle. It has a direct blowback action, weighs in at just under one pound, has a length of 7.25 inches with a 5.25 inch barrel, and is fed from Ruger 22 LR magazines. Weight is saved by the use of polymers rather than metal. The only metal components are the barrel, springs, and a few other internal parts. The Zip 22 lacks any grip, being little more than a simple box, which is awkward to hold, but this is the least of its design flaws. The gun lacks any sort of extractor or ejector, meaning jams are frequent. One user claimed that he never shot more than eight rounds without a malfunction. Having no ejector also means that when shell casings do leave the weapon, they do so at unpredictable angles, sometimes dropping hot brass onto the hands of the user. To chamber around, the Zip 22 has a pair of charging rods located above the barrel. The user would have to push on one of these rods, risking sweeping one of their fingers in front of the muzzle as they do so, violating universal gun safety rules and common sense. One of these rods would charge the weapon, but the second, shorter rod will simply reset the striker without ejecting a chambered round. But this has been known to cause a new round to be loaded, causing a double feed jam. On occasion, this restrike rod will cause a discharge if there is a chambered round, while the user's fingers are dangerously close to the muzzle. 
The poor performance of the Zip-22 led to USFA closing its doors in 2017. The Apache Revolver some weapons are specialized, capable of performing one task with extreme efficiency. Others can fulfill multiple roles. One of these, the Apache Revolver, has three weapons in one, and manages to be terrible at all three. Developed in France in 1869 by Louis Dolnay, the revolver was named after French street gangs dubbed La Sapeche for their supposed ferocity. The revolver consists of a firearm, a folding knife, and a brass knuckle duster. Weighing in at 0.8 pounds and at a length of 4.3 inches when folded, it was easily concealable and could be deadly at close range. This is where the advantage had ended. The main portion of the weapon was a six-cylinder revolver, chambered in 7mm, activated by a pinfire mechanism. It was arrayed in a pepper box fashion, meaning that there was no barrel for the round to travel down, each round leaving the chamber directly. Coupled with any lack of sights, the Apache pistol was inaccurate at all but very close range. In order to save space when folded, the handgun lacked a trigger guard, meaning there was a high risk of an accidental discharge. The safest way to carry the weapon was to leave an empty chamber under the uncocked hammer. The folding knife of the revolver is a double-edged straight-bladed dagger which folded out in front of the chambers. Fully extended, the blade was just over 2 inches in length, hardly long enough for use as an effective stabbing tool. The blade is also loosely attached, allowing it to be easily deployed, but tends to wobble when extended, making it vulnerable to snapping off with rough treatment. The only truly effective part of the weapon was the brass knuckle duster, which also acted as the handle for the dagger and the grip of the revolver when fully extended. There are some rumors that British commandos used a variant of the Apache during World War II, but this can't be confirmed. The Apache revolver was a weapon of intimidation, designed to encourage mugging victims to hand over their valuables, not something to engage with in a protracted fight. Today, it is considered little more than a novelty by collectors. The M1915 CSRG Shoe Shock during World War I, France was desperate to find any advantage to break the stalemate and end the catastrophic conflict that was bleeding the nation dry. To this end, they deployed the innovative M1915 CSRG, named the Shushot, after its inventor, Colonel Louis Shushot. This light machine gun had a number of different variants, predominantly being chambered in 8mm by 50 Lebel, the common cartridge in use by the French at the time, though versions using the 30 odd 6 Springfield, 7.65mm by 53 Mauser, among others, were also built. Though they all had their issues, it was the 30 odd 6 version issued to the American troops that had the most problems. With development beginning as early as 1903, it made use of many innovative features. It was very lightweight, only 20 pounds, less than half of other machine guns of the era, and could be easily transported by a single man. Because of this, it could be fired as a soldier advanced, providing fire support while on the move, rather than being stuck in a fixed position. There were many other problems, however. As the war raged, the French were desperate for any weapon that could give them an advantage, and manufacturing standards were relaxed. Many of the shoe shots were made by the Gladiator Bicycle Company, and the parts were flimsy, with very loose tolerances, so much so that parts were often not interchangeable. The ergonomics of the weapon also left much to be desired. The pistol grip was awkward, and the foregrip was too close to the rear for proper balance. The bipod was so tall that when fired prone, the user must lift their head perilously high above the ground to aim properly. The recoil mechanism was located above the buttstock, putting an eye or a cheek at risk. The moon-shaped box magazine had a large cutaway, which theoretically allowed the user to track remaining ammunition, though in reality it did little more than attract the dust, mud, and debris of the Western Front. The later version, chambered in 30 odd 6 Springfield, was made with even lower manufacturing standards. The magazine lips were too short, causing near-constant jams, a problem exacerbated by machining errors with the new caliber. As a result of its poor performance, the Americans would be forced to trade the weapon for the marginally superior 8mm version used by the French. It was the failure of the 30 odd 6 variant that gave the shoe shot its possibly undeserved reputation as the worst firearm in military history.